I'm going to show you how to connect to a local database using Visual Studio C Sharp. So first of all, you want to make sure you have all the required components. So in the Visual Studio installer, make sure you have the .NET desktop development and make sure you have the data storage and processing. So both of those are required. Go ahead and select them and then make sure it's installed. Next, after this, I go ahead and I create a new project, and this is going to be a Windows Form app. My Windows Form app, the main purpose is to do a contact list. So I'll do contact list as the name of my app. I'll go ahead and create that. Once my project has been created, I want to go ahead and create the database. So I'll go up here under view, and there is this SQL Server Object Explorer. So I'll go ahead and launch that. And once that's open, I can then expand the local DB, MySQL local DB, or the MS SQL local DB. Down in the databases, I can right click and I can add a new database. But before I do that, I want to figure out where do I want to put it. So I have this contact list location right here, and I want to right click this, and I want to go ahead and copy the full path. And this will get me the path to this directory. So back over to the server and database, right click, add new database. And my new database is for a phone list. So I'll call this my phone list. And for the location, let's go press control A and then control V to paste in just my contact list location. Click like that. And then it creates a database. So you can see phone list is now here. I can expand this and I can see tables. And on tables, I can select tables and right click and add a new table. So my new table, I'm going to want to make sure I name the table so I can change this part where it says table down here. And this would be my contacts table. All right. So once I have this contacts table named, I can go ahead and put in different things into it. So I want to keep track of the contact ID for each person. And that can be an integer. That looks good. I want to make sure I have a full name. And I want to have a phone number. And I can change these types right here. So this would be a bar char, let's say 255, because I could have a really long name. And this one, var char 2 is 250, I guess. Because we assume that phone numbers are going to be fairly short. All right. After I have done this, I can go ahead and create the database table file by clicking the update button. Click update. And it will then generate the database and just do update. And it's there. I can go ahead and close this. If I go back to the SQL Server Object Explorer, I can see there's a contact table here. And I can manually add some context. So let's go ahead and add some context. So I right click this, view data, and I want to add a couple of contacts. So this would be contact number one, and this would be Alice, and her phone number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the next one I will do is contact number two. And this would be Bob, and this is a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I go ahead and I do three, and this would be Charles, and he's got a fun number as well. All right. And then I can go ahead and add another one, just do Eve. And. bunch of numbers there. All right, so now this data is added. There are four contacts in my phone list. And I can go ahead and close this. If I wanted to go back and look at it again, I could go back and look at it again, right click, just view the data. I can once again update data and make modifications as needed. All right, so the next thing after this, now that I have my database file in place, it has some data in it, I want to make sure I can connect to and communicate with the database. So I go up to my tools 
and there is the nuget package manager and i want to select the manage nuget packages for solution in here i want to browse for and find a couple of different libraries so i want to get the microsoft microsoft entity framework core server or sql server sql sql server and you can see this is the microsoft entity framework core sql server i click that i select the whole project and then i want to change the version number so scroll down until i get to the highest 3.1 number 3.1.22 my in my case click install and then it will tell me a bunch of things about what it's installing and you just click OK. It might take a while to get that. Just, just be patient though. All right. Next, I want to install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL or the tools. And so after this is done installing, and it's taking a moment, I will install the tools. So just change this to tools, search for that, click the same thing. And once again, change the version number to the well 3.1 and install that and have that all taken care of all right so once that is there you then have some extra commands you can run so you have the scaffold db context so what is that let's go ahead and close this the scaffold db con db context allows me to create classes automatically based on database tables. So I go once again up to tools, the NuGet package manager, and I find the package manager console. I launch the console, and then I'm going to type a nice long line here. So I want to remember, first of all, where is this directory? So I go once again up here, right click, and I want to just copy the full path because we know that my file is in that directory. And if we look at my database, you can see the name is phone list. Now it's going to be phone list dot MDF. And I can go ahead and look for it if I wanted to. The directory right here that I just, my project's in, does contain the phone list dot MDF file. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to type in a command here to get my scaffolding stuff all done. So I do scaffold dash db context. You want to make sure you pay attention to case for everything. And this is connection with a capital C. And then I want to tell it that my data source equals the local db slash MSSQL local DB semicolon and then I want to attach the file attach file or DB DB file name equals and then if you saved your location you can just paste it right there and that is my phone list dot MDF semicolon you want to then type in integrated security equals true all right now that's the first part now you want to figure out what your provider is and you know that already because we installed it we don't actually know that but it's provider and that is the Microsoft Microsoft dot entity framework core dot sql server and then my output directory it's going to create a directory in my project so i want to call this one models for my models 
and I'm going to have my context. So the context file is what loads different uh, tables and allows you to connect to it. So I can just call my context file something. So I'll do this is my contact context. And it's going to inherit from the DB context. So you'll see something. And then I'll put a data annotations, which allows it to see different things such as which one's the key and another piece of information there. And then force, force. All right, so after I have all that in place, I go ahead and I hit enter. And it looks like it does not like that. Uh, so under models, actually, I want output dir, output directory models, so that it puts everything into the models directory. Sorry that. We go ahead and run that, and then it will generate this directory. You'll start seeing directories populating up here, and see it creates the contact context, which I told it right here. And the contacts right here is based on the table that I got well, information from, the table I created earlier. So you can see this table, it has my contact ID, the full name, and it has the phone number. So these are things I put in there automatically, and it just generated them. Um, you can see Above each one, there is some information. So this is the contact ID. It says it's the key. It tells it the column ID. And then the next one, it oops, it says it has a string length here and tells me the name. Same thing, string length here, and the name. All right. In the contact context, I have a new class, and this class has a contacts, well, object or a name here. And this variable I can use to then work with the items in the table. So I just need to create a contact context and then use the contacts variable inside of it. So let's go ahead and go back to my project. So, um, well, the design. I have the database connected now. I can use the database, and I want to see what's here and how to make it work. And so one of the easiest ways is to go ahead and start with putting my toolbox on and finding a list view. So I'll go grab the list view and drag it over here to my project. And the list view, I can then expand it a bit and scroll down and reshape this window. And this list, list view, I want to change the columns. Now remember, I have a contact ID, a full name, and a phone number. So I will go ahead and edit my columns, and I'll put in the text right here, contact ID. This one is going to be my full name. And then I want to have the last one be my phone number. So I click OK. Now, we don't see any headers yet, so we want to go and change this a bit. So over here in the properties, we have the name of this object. It's set in design, so I'm going to go ahead and change the name. So I'll just do LST contacts. And then I want to change the appearance. So go up to appearance right here below behavior. There's view, and I'm going to change the view to be details. And now I can see the contact ID, the full name, and the phone number. But these things aren't displayed yet. So I need to load this information in. And I'm going to do that on loading time. So double click here. And then I've got this form load method. 
But before I do that, I actually need to have my context. So my contact context. And so what I'm going to do is have a contact or contact context. Now I don't have it. Uh, there's no using statement here, so I can't actually use it yet. But I just like typing this thing in here first and then show potential fixes. And then it has the using contact list models. So I'll put that there. And now it's in there. So the models are all loaded. And so I want to create a contact context. I'm going to call this context. Or me just do some short CTX. And it's going to be a new contact context. Once I have this in place, I can use variables from that. So if I use, uh, if I want to get the contact list, I can do a var contacts, create a local variable equal to, and I'll use the ctx dot, and I want to get the contacts, contacts right there. All right, I want to populate this list view right here. So what I do first is clean out the list view because we don't really want it to have any data. So I'll do my LST context dot items clear. So it's all empty, first of all. I mean, it was empty already because there's nothing there, but I'm going to go ahead and clear it just because I like, I like to have a habit of doing that. And then I want to loop over all the contacts and put them there. So I need another variable. So I'll do an int i equals zero. And this is for which row number? Starting with zero. Now for each loop, for each and contact, contacts, because it's called a contacts over here. And I would call it contact. And this is in my variable I just grabbed, which is contacts. Can get confusing with all these different things. You have to make sure you pay attention to which one you're using. And then what I want to do is add each one to the list one at a time. So I'll do LST contacts items. Add and I want to add my contact and I want the contact ID. And since it's an integer, I need to convert that to a string. And then after I have that done, I want to add the sub items, and that's why we have this int i. So my lst contacts items. I because I'm going to use sub items sub items add and the next thing I want to add is my full name so I'll do my contact full name and then I can do the exact same thing here just copy that and change it from full name to my phone number. All right. Now, in order to make it change what value I has, I just do an I plus plus right here. And then it should update all the information so that each line is different. So now I will go ahead and save everything and run it and see what happens. Popped up with the contact ID numbers, the full name, and the phone numbers for each person. So I can go ahead and modify my list accordingly. But really, the goal here was to learn how to connect to a database and to be able to retrieve data from a database. All right, hope that helps.